Tao Te Ching, Chapter 15 The sages of old were profound, and knew the ways of subtlety and discernment. Their wisdom is beyond their comprehension. Because their knowledge was f so far superior, I can only give a poor description. They were careful, as someone crossing a frozen stream in winter, alert as if surrounded on all sides by the enemy, courteous as a guest, fluid as melting ice, whole as an uncarved block of wood, receptive as a valley, turbid as muddied water. Who can be still until the mud settles and the water is cleared by itself? Can you remain tranquil until right action occurs by itself? The master doesn't seek fulfillment, for only those who are not full are able to be used, which brings the feeling of completeness. Chapter 16 If you can empty your mind of all thoughts, your heart will embrace the tranquility of peace. Watch the workings of all of creation, but contemplate their return to the source. All creatures in the universe return to the point where they began. Returning to the source is tranquility. Because we submit to heaven's mandate, Returning to heaven's mandate is called being constant. Knowing the constant is called enlightenment. Not knowing the constant is the source of evil deeds because we have no roots. By knowing the constant, we can accept things as they are. By accepting things as they are, we become impartial. By being impartial, we become one with heaven. By being one with heaven, we become one with Tao. Being one with Tao, we are no longer concerned about losing our life because we know the Tao is constant and we are one with Tao. Chapter 17 The best leaders are those the people hardly know exist. The next best is a leader who is loved and praised. Next comes the one who is feared. The worst one is the leader that is despised. If you don't trust the people, they will become untrustworthy. The best leaders value their words and use them sparingly. When she's accomplished her task, the people say, Amazing! We did it all by ourselves. Chapter 18 When the great Tao is abandoned, charity and righteousness appear. When intellectualism arises, hypocrisy is close behind. When there is strife in the family unit, people talk about brotherly love. When the country falls into chaos, Politicians talk about patriotism. Chapter 19 Forget about knowledge and wisdom, and people will be a hundred times better off. Throw away charity and righteousness, and people will return to brotherly love. Throw away profit and greed, and there won't be any thieves. These three are superficial and aren't enough to keep us at the center of the circle, so we must also embrace simplicity. Put others first, desire little. Chapter 20 Renounce knowledge, and your problems will end. What is the difference between yes and no? What is the difference between good and evil? Must you fear what others fear? Nonsense! Look how far you have missed the mark. Other people are joyous, as though they were at a spring festival. I alone am unconcerned and expressionless like an infant before it's learned to smile. Other people have more than they need. I alone seem to possess nothing. I am lost and drift about with no place to go. I am like a fool. My mind is in chaos. Ordinary people are bright. I alone am dark. Ordinary people are clever. I alone am dull. Ordinary people seem discriminating. I alone am muddled and confused. I drift on the waves of the ocean, blown at the mercy of the wind. Other people have their goals. I alone am dull and uncouth. I am different from ordinary people. I nurse from the Great Mother's breasts. <laughs>